How's it going everybody? My name is Isaiah, this is Oregon Rockworks, and today I want to do something a little more conceptual. Instead of talking about a specific deposit or a certain category of materials, today I want to answer a question, and that question is, what makes good rocks good? This is something I find myself explaining to people who are new to rocks pretty frequently, and I want to break it down at least the way I think about it. Understand that my scope here is somewhat narrow. What I do is just a small corner of the world of lapidary. I don't do any carving or faceting or jewelry making. Uh, but I want to talk about what goes through my mind when I'm thinking about buying, collecting, valuing, grading rocks. And the big three I'm going to mention today are color, pattern, and texture. To illustrate the point I'm attempting to make, I'm going to use two materials that I love that I haven't showed on this channel yet. On the left is dinosaur gem bone from the Colorado Plateau, and on the right is a material called vistaite, which is a certain picture jasper that comes out of the Ochicos in central Oregon. These pieces I'm holding show all three of the characteristics I'm looking for. Good color, good pattern, and great texture slash composition, aka the ability to take a great polish. Getting all three of these characteristics in any given piece is pretty rare, especially when the materials are rare to begin with. Here are some examples of Vistaite that have great color, are very hard and durable, the pattern is lacking. Here is an example of Dinosaur Bone. Very hard, took a great polish, the colors are bold, the contrast is there, it lacks pattern. And in the case of Dinosaur Bone, that to me equates to details in the cells. My camera doesn't pick up on a lot of this super well, so I'm going to use my digital microscope a little bit to illustrate this point also. This is kind of a clunky way to demonstrate this, but here's an example of a piece that does have good detail in the cells. Each cell has its own little world going on, multiple colors within the cells, etc. Here is a piece of Vistaite with great pattern and texture, but lacking in color. Everything about it is lovely, but if you imagine cutting jewelry stones, it lacks a little bit of the dynamics you might hope for. Once again, the pattern is great. It is bulletproof material. It lacks a little bit in the color department. Here are two examples of gem bone that lack bold colors. They're both very solid. They've got nice details in the cells. The pattern is there. The contrast is not. This has got nice big pink cells, but the webbing is so muted, the piece really doesn't stand out. This piece has big cells, great details, but a lot of dull areas just lacking colorful interest. Here's a piece of Vistite with great color, great pattern, but some compositional issues. It's got these soft sort of rotted out spots. It'd be hard to pick a full stone out of here without getting some of this sort of uh, rotten area. Uh, it's also got some hairline fractures. They're a little hard to see because this cut is so rough it hides them. But this piece has some structural issues despite the fact the color and pattern are great. I would say gem bone is sort of notorious as a material that has good color and pattern but tends to be soft. Uh, in this case, we got large cells with great details, but this webbing is just a little rotten. It broke when I polished it. It's got a big crack here. Uh, the cells are just not held together very well. Um, it would be hard to get a smooth polish if you were to cut this for jewelry stones, and the cells will tend to pop out, um, disconnecting from each other. Here's that piece under the scope. The polish sucks, but that's my fault, not because of the piece. Great contrast, bold colors, big cells, details. It's just got some structural problems. Here are just a few more examples of gem bone that has great color and pattern, but lacks that solid texture. It's got some fractures, and just generally, the cells aren't cemented together very well. Here's another example, beautiful agate fortification on top. The webbing is soft, the cells are sort of fractured up, and this whole top is just 
I wouldn't want to cut it up. I would be afraid it would blow up and fall apart. Obviously, this stuff can be stabilized. It's very common. Uh, that is not something that I do. Maybe I will down the line. But just to illustrate the point, there's a lot of great gem bone out there with bold colors, high contrast, great pattern, structural issues. I wanted to give one caveat when I'm deciding whether or not to spend money and buy something. It may not meet these three criteria, but if it has this non-typical factor, something, something unique and special about it, then I may say that those three characteristics aren't as important as they may be in other cases. Here's an example of Vistaite that, yeah, maybe lacks a little pattern, but the colors are very weird. Uh, the piece is very solid, super, super solid. Worth buying, worth having, to me, because it's unusual. I hope that made sense to you and you're able to grasp my broader point. Obviously, the specifics of the criteria are going to change a bit with each material, but just to reiterate, when I talk about texture and composition, I'm talking about the ability to take a great polish. When I'm talking about pattern, you know, if it's a picture jasper, I'm talking about scenery. When it comes to dinosaur bone, I'm talking about details and contrast and color is sort of self-explanatory. You want bright colors, multiple colors, etc. So if you got any questions, uh, fire them my way. Thank you all so much for watching and uh, have a great day.